Sosa has got Britt hooked over the shoulder. Oh, she, oh no, oh no. She's not going to do this, is she? Yep. Oh, fire thunder driver through the table. Both ladies are damaged goods. So I was going to ask you something. Um, thumbtacks. Yeah. Like, how do thumbtacks work? How does the thumbtack spots work? It seems so incredibly painful and dangerous. Like, you, I feel like you would get super bloodied and you'd need stitches. Uh, you know, I just, like, I don't want to date it, but it's just, like, thumbtacks are, are after my time. But, like, I, I study it and I try to make sense of it. You know, I feel like Mick Foley normalized thumbtacks in wrestling. Obviously, that was 1998 with his famous Hell in the Cell where he had thumbtacks, which did he really need thumbtacks since he just went off the top of the cage and then went through the cage to the point where a tooth went through his nose? Somehow the height of the fall does not mesh with the thumbtacks. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, I don't know if you needed that, but he basically, yeah, that was basically three hand grenades for this to blow up the same thing. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I've always looked at it, and the only thing that I was just like, you can shave the sharp tip off where they'll still stick to you but they still will stick to you where even if you shave it it's still metal like a lot of people say oh are you know th this is fake you know th that's a work but a lot of times n no like for how many years did everybody think that the blood was fake mm -hmm. and they were pretty much appalled when they found out no the blood wasn't fake yeah my grandpa thought it was ketchup yeah it was just like <laughs> <laughs> like so to actually find out that no no the blood's real but it's it's only worked because we cut ourselves yeah with small razor blades that were hiding <laughs> in our mouth i remember some of the old timers they would talk about the ones that yeah they, they weren't allowed to uh pop their zits around anyone because they were afraid that an old razor would come flying out and poke <laughs> somebody's eye out because <laughs> it's just like you had two different ways of doing it where you had the the cutting way where you just do a slice but some of them would do the stabbing way. And then if they really didn't like you, they would call it hard way, which basically means they're going to find a sharp edge to hit you on and make you bleed. Or if you're Brock Lesnar, when he says, I'm going to cut you hard, he's going to elbow you in your head until you bleed. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like, that has not worked. I mean, if you watch that Randy Orton SummerSlam match, that was not worked. He elbowed him in the head and made him bleed. But anyway, getting off track. I think the thumbtacks are probably shaved down, but that doesn't make it hurt any less. I just don't see how you can shave. You're going to shave the entire uh, circular surface of a tack head and also clip off the point. But if you clip off the point, it's still stabby. It's still stabby. And that's why it still sticks in you. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think, I think the tacks are, I don't think the tacks are, I think they're made safer. Very similar to, we're going to use a real table, but we might score it in case it doesn't break. And you can always see when someone, and, and I've been put through tables that were not scored. They usually break pretty easy depending on who's throwing you through them. <laughs> you know, it's just like, I don't know when uh, Ahmed Johnson put me through a table that wasn't scored. It didn't have any trouble breaking when my back hit it. It, it went through it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't, the scored always kind of weird. It, it's just like, if it's too worked, it's going to look too, uh, I don't want to say the F word. If it's too worked, it's not going to, you're going to lose the illusion. So I think with the tax, man, I don't know. It, even like you said, it's still going to stab in you. And you see the little points of blood, but it's just not going to draw as much blood because it's not going to go as deep. Yeah. But, you but it just seems like every surface, every angle of that will poke into your, yeah. will break your flesh. And if you look at it, like when they're like, doing a roll up or something they're sticking in the bottom of their shoes they've yeah. they've sunk in the rubber so they're going to sink into you if they're going to sink into the rubber they're going to sink into your flesh but i don't know with with uh with our we're talking we're we're jumping into the lights out match right yeah so is this the end of the feud uh in theory it should be right. i mean I think this, this is and the, Thunder Rosa have been going at it for a while now. for a long time. And yeah. this is no better. You know, you have the blow off match, right? You need the blow off match to end the feud. And if it was old school wrestling, I would say yes, just because you had the champion in the back watching that she knew whoever survived this match 
was coming for her title. The difference is here now, I don't know if necessarily the survivor of this match is going to be the one that's going to get the title shot because I feel like they had a little bit of Stone Cold Bret Hart going on where even though Stone Cold passed out and was the one bleeding and lost the match, he got over bigger. You know, that was the famous double turn because Stone Cold got over so big in that match that Bret became the heel. Where I feel like Bret, even though she lost the match, I feel like she is going to be the one that's in line for the title. But I feel like the rules are different now. Are they going to use this to set up? Because now they're both over. I mean, I don't know. Is Thunder Rosa still under contract with NWA? See, I don't know what's going on with that. But it occurred to me that I feel like they wouldn't have booked Thunder Rosa to win if they didn't have plans for her going forward. Jade Cargill was the one in the audience watching. Yep. I felt like they were setting up Jade Cargill and Thunder Rosa. Which they could be. Yeah, and... I don't think they do Jade Cardgill and Britt because they're both heels. No. Yeah. And now they could also do a, a triple threat, right? And when back in the blow off match, there was no such thing as going into a triple threat because they both got over. I mean, they stole the show. I mean, this is we're in March and this is the match of the year candidate because make no mistake, you can call wrestling a work. They beat the shit out of each other and you saw the welts on both of their bodies that they were just like, you know, you know, they say we're not pulling any punches. They clearly were not pulling, you know, they were hitting each other really hard. And that bump at the end, I don't know what she calls that move. The thunder driver, the way that her neck, like I was, I, yeah, I tensed up on that one. Yeah. I winced. And then it looks like her body kind of like jackknifed, but in the wrong direction Mm -hmm. after the beating that they just gave each other. I mean, Mick Foley was on, he immediately tweeted because he basically was following the hashtag and was like, obviously there's something going on that I need to watch this. Where is this happening? And then he tweeted a video of himself giving a thumbs up that is just like, wow. Because this is a match of the year. I mean, coming off the, you know, the exploding barbed wire death match, they kind of needed a match like this because now I feel like they, they it sputtered because of the the explosion not turning out this way and then they got something like this you're just like fine we're gonna just make these two beautiful girls bodies explode in front of you when they just beat the crap out of each other it's it's match of the year so far it's AEW match of the year for me i like jr's uh last line after the uh after the final <laughs> table spot these women are damaged goods <laughs> yeah that was <laughs> <laughs> he did say that and yeah it came off. I don't. I don't know if he meant it that way. It's just like sometimes Jr.'s stream of thought just comes. He just says what he what he thinks. Or I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess it depends. But yeah, that may have came off wrong. But the sentiment was appreciated of what he was saying. Is just, yeah, they they are highly damaged each other. I mean, that is that is what they would call. It was it was brutal. They would call that a, a locker room sellout. You know, because they would call that a locker room sellout because everybody would be gathered, you know, gathered or a monitor sellout. Everybody would have been gathered around a monitor watching a match like that or peeking outside the curtain to see what is going on right now that the crowd. And the only thing that was missing, unfortunately, for that was a live audience. But even the wrestlers that were in the crowd did appreciate that. And you heard the live fans that were way in the back in the cheap seats. They were chanting. AEW squeezes the most juice out of their, you know, they limited, limited fans. It you, you know, you can't say you don't miss it, but it doesn't feel empty. No, it doesn't. It it feels way more crowded than the Thunderdome. The Thunderdome doesn't give me any kind of feelings other than the piped in noise is very distracting. Thunderdome is a is a is a Black Mirror episode come yeah, to life. It is to come to life, but this. People would have, oh, this would have been a standing ovation match. Both women, to me, both women were already over and they were just waiting to get that notch. Maybe Thunder Rosa a little, she's over in the indie scene and she's over everywhere she goes, but maybe this is what got her AEW over with the office, right? That's what I'm thinking. But Britt was already over. I was wondering why, just like maybe they wanted one more nudge. It just makes sense now. Britt, 
Brit should have the belt. You know, and then they can always come back to this, right? Yeah. The feud is over. But if Brit takes the belt, now Thunder Rosa has it over her that I beat you in that fight. And now I deserve a title shot. So that that would be another reason for them to have another killer match. But this would be tough to how do you follow this? Yeah. As, you know, with with those two. Like how are they gonna follow that? Don't that, know. I don't I think this is the end of their feud. Um Yeah, and it's th- current in its current form, this is the end of their feud. Right. But no, I think that they have um, elevated each other so much that they need to split them up now. Yeah. It, you know? Well, they, yeah, they need to get the, basically, they got the rub. They got some legitimate street cred. They got, you know, a lot of people's issue with only, AEW doesn't have a lot of issues to a lot of people, but one of their issues was their women's division. This clearly showed that when they focus, their women division is stronger because this was their match of the year, went men or women. So they will split them up, and they should, and try to elevate some of the other women because now all of a sudden it's just like you got the new girl. That was her second match, the girl that was with Shaq, and she's just like, how is she that good on mm-hmm. her second match? You know, she has the look, and she t- and this is only her second match. You know, and Britt was already over. Thunder Rosa, like I said, she's always great. Now it's time to start elevating all the women in that division to the yeah. next level. Because they, they, I don't know. Like, I feel like we haven't, if if these women are as talented as they could be, they they haven't had to show it yet. And now the line has been drawn in the sand that this is the new bar that you have to match to keep up with this division. And that's going to elevate all the women. It has to, you know, this is going to be a, a, a eat or be eaten situation. So hats off to those girls. I mean, that was, that was a great match. I mean, I don't, there were some really gnarly bumps. Yeah. There were some really gnarly bumps that you might not have, ex- you would have expected it maybe from Thunder Rosa. Like I said, she's, she's well-traveled, you know, all over the world. So, you know, she's, she's done some shit. She's done some shit. Where with Britt Baker, I don't know. Britt likes to get bloody. She did. And this was like, it was a nasty cut. It was. And you saw it like flowing through. And it's just like, I don't know if she, if the, if she gigged herself or not, to be honest. I don't know if that was a hard way cut because it was, it was in the hairline. So uh, potentially, but wow. Again, that blood was pumping out of there. They clearly TNT is okay with blood. You know, it's just like, I don't know. I haven't seen any WWE blood lately that I don't know if they're still doing that. Let's turn this black and white to, to mask the shock. Yeah. I don't know if that's still happening or not, but they give TNT cover with the whole lights out gimmick. Yeah, that's true. What happens is not sanctioned by the network. Oh man, that sells tickets right there. Yeah. You always knew when something was like, this is basically the equivalent of the ending of Rocky Five. This isn't going to be a boxing match. We're going to fight. It's not a pie eating contest, Paulie. We're going in an alley and we're going to fight. And that's basically what they did. And when you knew that, it was just like, okay, these these two really didn't don't like each other. Is there a legitimate heat there too? I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I kind of feel like a lot of uh, folks have heat with Thunder Rose. Not a lot, but I think some folks do. But to me, honestly, good. Not good that they don't get along, but good is in the sense that you're like, that adds the element of realism that is mm-hmm. is missing all the time. I don't yeah. want to see, you know what I don't want to see after that match? Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker uh, putting an Instagram story up of just like posing in the, in the locker room with each other. Yeah. I don't want to see that because yeah. I just, I, you got me to suspend my belief. So keep it that way start to bring kayfabe back a little bit you know we know it's not it's not big but you will tune into a match where you're like hey i heard these two don't really like each other just with that line yeah now you're more interested you want to see yeah now you want to see is there a chance that they're not going to be snug right that was the big thing and we'll get into this in a future episode with the uh, whole montreal screw job right there's just like Everybody knew Sean and Brett did not like each other. And that's what made their match more intriguing. Because you were looking to see, is he going to hit him harder? Is he going to not pull it? Is he going to be... 
and and look it's a it's a brotherhood sisterhood now that basically i'm giving i'm opening myself up to you my body for the sake of the business for the sake of us to make money treat me with care because i'm giving you know i'm gonna get you over by basically letting you do things to me that you wouldn't normally do in a fight right Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i think tuning in to see if someone's willing to cross that line, right? Willing to, uh, Kevin Sullivan, willing to break the pencil and say, I don't care what's booked. I'm going to hit you. Makes a big difference. They had NXT had it a little bit right with Adam Cole, you know, and, uh, uh, what's his name? What's the, uh, the punter name from the Colts, the football player. Oh, I don't remember. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. But he went on his talk show and he made a short joke and Adam Cole legit flipped out on him and people, and then they had a match later and it's just like, oh, so does that mean it was worked or did they take something real and turn it into money, Mm -hmm. which is what a good wrestling promoter would do? I don't know. Man, it's going to drive me crazy. Google it and we'll cut that part out. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I don't know. I don't like to think maybe Pat there's McAfee. Pat McAfee. The Pat McAfee show. Huge wrestling fan, former football player. Got into it, turned it into a match, made money. But you're always looking to see is Adam Cole going to take a liberty because he called him short? I don't know. But that's just important. It's just like so I was already a little intrigued if there was a little bit of heat there. So I don't really know want to know if there was really heat there or not because they hit each other really hard and i guess that's it's 2021 your your wrestling is going to be a lot more snug than it used to be because now you're coming up on basically a a a generation of fans that do not know a world without ufc and know what it looks like when you punch somebody in the face for real like nobody's gonna you know straddle somebody on the top of the cage and call for the crowd to count along with a 10 punch to the head because <laughs> you know what's going to happen after one of those punches mm-hmm. so that makes a big difference great match though oh yeah it really was it's just like it it stole the show but it also stole the year i mean that would have been the match that if that was on the pay-per-view that they just had you got your money's worth with just that match yeah i think that there's another qualification that's not stole the show it wasn't a show stealer it was like intended to be the main event and it completely went over as the main event you know what i mean oh yeah nothing else you no one talked about anything else from that night of uh no dynamite except and and here's the thing about that nobody else talked about it but it was a great show it like was it, a great show. it had a great show it had the introduction of pinnacle which basically is going to be four horsemen 2.0 I mean, it basically paid off on that great angle that they've been doing with MJF and the Inner Circle. They had some solid stuff. There was nothing bad from that night, but it just, this was just that powerful. And they tweeted out a video afterwards of, uh, you know, Britt talking to Tony Khan, who's in the audience, and he basically acknowledged it's like, this was the best show that we've ever done. And it was because of you too. And it was great that it's just like, it just doesn't seem like that long ago that, you know, we were talking about the women's revolution, even though women have been in wrestling as far as I remember, right? I mean, you go all the way back, but there wasn't that, there was only in that, that attitude error of the bra and panties match where it feel like maybe it took a step back a little bit. And that just doesn't even exist anymore. That it was just like, it is just men nope. and women wrestlers. It's strange to me to think that the former women's belt was the divas championship. Yeah. Right. And it's just like dripping in blood. I mean, they just, they made it look a little bit too, that was just a little bit too PG. I mean, those women already could go. I mean, these, it's, it's going to take a lot more to just now for looks. I guess maybe there was a, a time period where a lot of women were getting into wrestling just on their looks. And this is, it. maybe it's starting to go away. I don't know, but it's just like even the women that were supposedly, you know, the the Trish Stratuses and the Tori Wilsons that, you know, kind of came in just on their looks. And they actually turned out to be really 
good workers. You know, they did, they turned it around in a time where, but now it's just like, okay, now everybody's coming in. So what are you going to do different? You know, what are you going to do that's going to get you over, which is the whole thing, right? It's just, what are you going to do to get, what are you going to do to get me to buy a ticket, virtual ticket now? What are you going to do to get me to invest my time in watching you beside your look? And yeah, this is, this was that, you know, these are two good looking women, but they beat the crap out of each other to the point where the hardcore legend was like, yeah, this is good. And it was the build to the violence was great. Oh yeah. The pacing was great. Cause honestly, as we got to um, the main event, I kind of looked at the clock and I was like, there's only 20 minutes left. You know, I thought maybe I thought this was going to be sort of um, more like a marathon, you know, one of those matches that goes on forever. Oh yeah. No, they, no indication that it was going into death match. Territory. No. Oh, and it did. It really did. And I don't, like I said, I don't know if it was a conscious decision, like, hey, we just had an exploding death match and there wasn't a big explosion, so we need something to elevate again. And they delivered. 